Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay, we're live. Tēnā koutou, um, I'd like to welcome you all to this ordinary meeting of the Carlton District Council. Um, I'd like to start off by acknowledging um, those that are present here, um, Tārangi Kaipiria from Hurunui Orangi Marae, welcome. Um, and also acknowledge those in the public gallery and the, the media table and everyone to, attending virtually. Um, so, so welcome. Um, so I'd like to start please um, with the Karakia, the Karakia Te Manga Tanga. Tony Kai video, could you lead us through that, please? Uh, Kira mai anō tato, fano, Karakia Te Mata Tanga. Mai te pai maunga raro ki te tai, mai te awa tonga raro ki te awa raki. Tenei te ha puri afi ai e taratahi. Fano, fano, hara mai te tuki. Homi e uie tai ki. <laughs> Sure. Okay, we'll just start please um, with apologies. I have apologies from Mountain Meehi and apologies for lateness from Councillor Russell Keyes. Um, can I have a mover for those please? Robin, Jerry Campbell move. Moved by Robin and, and uh, seconder. Second. Seconded by Councillor Grady, Jill Grady. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried, thank you. Right, um, are there any conflicts of interest declarations? No? Um, we have no one for public forum. So we'll move on to item number five on the agenda, which is confirmation of the minutes. There's two sets of minutes there, one of the ordinary meeting held on the 8th and one of the extraordinary council meeting held on the 20th of May. So, if we go, go through those minutes, is there any comments to come from the minutes? Uh, the minutes of the ordinary meeting, um, item four, uh, the motion I was, I'm missing from those recorded against that motion. So, we go, please. so um, item four on the ordinary minutes, uh, there was a, a motion uh, which was voted upon and I'm missing from the list of those who voted against that motion. Oh, okay. If we read that, thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on those minutes? Okay, so if we move on to the minutes of the extraordinary meeting on the 20th of May, are there any comments on those minutes? Okay, can we have a mover to accept those two sets of minutes, please? Yeah. Rebecca and seconded. seconded by Brian. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Gary, thank you. All right, so we move on to number six on the agenda, which is the review of consultation decision for the 2021 annual plan. So um, can I hand it over to Phoebe now, please, to talk to this report? Thank you. Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, so I'll take the report as read. And questions from any of the council. I'll open it up for questions there. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I Rebecca. One question, and it's um, it's to do more with the, the content of the annual plan rather than the consultation, but um, just with the the announcement of the weekend to um, loosen up some of the building requirements. Mm -hmm. Do you think that our cons will we see a larger drop than that forty percent predicted in our consent fees? Um, I think it's probably too early to tell, but we're really hopeful that because the consent activity has been continuing to be strong through March and April, that maybe we won't. Um, getting close to that 40% decline and therefore if there was any other factors that came into play we would have budgeted in enough contingency for ourselves. Cool, thank you. Okay. So this is, yeah, question. Yeah. Just one question, page 
12, so it's a continuation of item 4.4, mm -hmm. the table of issues. The first one about related to strategic assets. Mm -hmm. um, the What we looked at was substantially um, going to affect our cash reserves versus our debtors. Mm -hmm. Those strategic assets or Strategic assets are um, physical assets, so like it would be our underground assets or um, the event centre would be a strategic asset. Okay. So something that's really um, significant. Okay. Any other questions before we move on to Zoom? Um, yes, I've got one for Phoebe. The, um, in the adjustments to the non rates revenue, the 15% the reduced on the petrol tax receipts. Mm -hmm. Is there any indication from NZTA yet on any predictions on any of that or not? I haven't seen anything. Um, the petrol tax comes through to us in arrears. So that's why we sort of predicted that what we're seeing currently in terms of a reduction in traffic on the roads would actually flow through into the result for next year. Um, but I haven't seen anything come through from the CTA. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions before we open up for discussion? Yes, um, Phoebe, do you see the um the reduction of the 30% in the rental and hireage in the event centre, um, with the increase in groups allowable, do you see that dropping as such in the near future? Yeah, when we built these assumptions, we built them on the basis that for the first quarter of the next financial year, we'd be at reduced capacity, in the second quarter, we'd be getting back up closer to full capacity, and then for the last two quarters, we'd be back at full capacity. So probably on the basis of that, um, again, just reiterating that we're being conservative with these estimates. So um, it could well be significantly less than that, but that's sort of the, um, the timeline that we worked on is that we wouldn't be getting back to normal C until post new year. I think that timeline probably still stands. Yeah. It's very much an unknown at the moment, isn't it really? Yeah. Okay, um, no further questions, then we'll open up for discussion. Um, who would like to start off the discussion? Well, well, from my perspective, it's been a process that we've worked through, and um, this is just to make sure that we're, we're happy that we're, we're not going to consult. Um, and I'm, I'm happy. I just briefly agree. I mean, I support what you're saying. Um, levels of service are unchanged. The rate levels are going to be what we predicted in that long-term plan. So, um, what will we consult on? Yeah, and just following on from what Stephen said, um, I know in the past, but I am I'm very keen to see um, submissions come in and go open for consultation, but there are some very specific requirements around consultation. Um, which makes it quite difficult for us to hear it right back or do it really quickly. So, um, yeah, so I'm in the same boat as Stephen. I think I'm happy with not consulting this year. Yeah, um, Rob. Yeah, Rob Stockley. Um, I would, I agree. I, I, I don't think this, I think the, the cost to consulting on what's essentially business as usual. Um, we had no consultations needed. Um, that cost, I think, would be um, unreasonable to inflict that on the, on the rate payer. Um, I think that the considerations, given, given the uncertainty around COVID, I think all of the considerations in the report and the, uh, before council are cautious and prudent um, and will put us in a good position to be able to support the community going forward. Yeah. Robin? Robin Cherry Campbell, I think the table VB is that's been really, really good to actually highlight what the matters and issues are like, and that, that does reiterate again, sort of my fellow councillors, um, that the level of significance is very low and I don't see the need to consult on any of that matter. Um, I'm just thinking like from the community's point of view, if they wanted to see the annual plan before we adopt it at the end of June, um, are we able to put it on the website so that if members of the community do have questions, they can come to the councillors or have a chat to us? Or is that 
considered a formal consultation. Um, it wouldn't be considered formal consultation. I guess we could look to get that agenda item maybe earlier. I mean, it will be uploaded as part of the normal agenda for people to read. Um, so they would, you know, that's normally the lead time that we give people with that statutory requirement so that everybody's got enough time to read the agenda. Um, to get enough time, so I guess we'd be following that same practice. Would it be doable to get it up slightly earlier with that specific item? Uh, I guess the, yeah, I think we could look at it. Yeah. I thought there was a draft already up there. Yeah, there is. Pardon? Mm -hmm. But the draft's already up there. Is it already on yeah. the website? Yeah, the draft, so the picture. draft from the meeting on the 18th of March, yeah. where we made the decision not to consult the draft as it stood was mm -hmm. uploaded then. In terms of, um, in real terms for the community, what are we going to be doing with them this year? What are the projects? What are our activities? All of that content is unchanged because we're not changing our levels of service. Um, but it's really that information up front, which I'll be working on following this decision, um, which is talking about how we're responding and what we think is going to be happening in the community. So that's the stuff that will be changing. Yeah, and I guess the financial pages will change somewhat as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Brian. Um, yeah, whilst I, I um, agree with the sentiments that, um, that have already been said, I think um, that um, as, as ratepayers, we don't want to shut them out altogether. We want to invite discussion, and I think that's what it's about. Um, we need to get the documents um, out there, and, and as it's already been said, we've got draft documents already available. So. Um, we can use those as discussion papers and, and, and encourage people to get back to us and discuss um, so that, um, that um, yeah, the, the ratepayer slash public have, have got um, some sort of um, input into um, and decisions and what we've already decided. I'd say, yeah, there's um, definitely a lot to be said for the way that we communicate this to the community. So pushing that information out about what we're going to be doing, not even necessarily having a full plan document, because I'm not, I'm not sure how many people would read that from cover to cover, but having that really good key messaging, which is where Elisa um, will come up as well, so that will be a big part of it too. Good. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just want to acknowledge um, the process that we've been through. We've, we've looked at looked at this over a lengthy period of time, and we've ended up where we're ending up to not finalised yet. But um, I think the story that we've told the community so far has is, is, is been good. So thank you to management for that. Um, so I'll go to recommendations now. So um, there's four of them. Four of them. We'll take them all together. Um, so I'll read them all out. Number one receives the report. Number two. Notes advice has been sought from the council's lawyers, which support the officer's view that the proposed change approach by, to the annual plan 2020-21 does not trigger the council's significant and engagement policy. Number three, agrees the amended approach to the 2020-21 annual plan does not trigger a requirement to consult on the draft annual plan. Two thousand and twenty, not to consult on the draft annual plan in twenty twenty one. Can I have a movement for those, please? Uh, Steve and uh, second it, Robert. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Barry, thank you. Thank you. Right. So now we move to number seven on the agenda, which is on page fifteen which is a change to the chair of the Community Grants Committee. Um, it's pretty straightforward there. Um, Councillor Greathead is, is asked if she could um, step down from being the chair, and so there's recommendations there for um, Councillor Robin Cherry to take over the um, chair, and um, Deputy Mayor for Guns to be the Deputy Chair. So, um, any discussion on that? Questions? I just like to thank Robin for taking over. Bring a lot of experience from go karting and with this small business well. Now I've been included in the committee. Well, yeah. I must acknowledge that, that, that um, you still want to be on the committee. Yep. So that's great. Yeah. Anything else? 
Oh, just one quick point, if I may. I just want to thank Jill for her time on that committee, like many other committees over many years. You've been a councillor, so just thanks and great. You still need your experience to stay on the committee. I guess that's pretty straightforward. Any discussion? Okay, so we'll go straight to the recommendations. So there's three recommendations. I'll take them all together. Number one, receives a report. Notes Councillor Greathead's request to vacate the role of Chair of the Community Grants Committee. And number three, appoints Councillor Cherry Campbell as Chair, Deputy Mayor, regards as Deputy Chair of the Community Grants Committee. Another mover, please. Councillor Rob and Signa. Brian, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. It's carried, thank you. So now we move to number eight, which is a re retrospective resolution for the Local Government Funding Agency. Phoebe. Thank you. Uh, so again, I'll take this report as read and just noting the timelines that mean that this needs to be a retrospective resolution rather than one that comes in advance. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. And I'm sorry that you've had so many attachments that you probably <laughs> felt that you needed to read. <laughs> Um, so, um, questions? One, yes. Were there any, any negative, um, the fact that this has been done retrospectively, are there any negative impacts or risks around that? This is Only one would be if you decided that you've been happy to do it and then you needed to pull the documents back from our GFA. Okay, thank you. Um, but no, the risk is not the low significance decision. Okay, any, any other questions? Right. No discussion? Right. Pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you. So we'll move to recommendations. Number one receives the report. Number two approves the amendments to the LGFA borrowing scheme. Number three <coughs> resolves retrospectively to delegate authority to the two elected members, His Worship the Mayor and Councillor Cherry Campbell, to sign the deed of amendment and, reins and reinstatement for the multi multi issue a deed and note subscription agreement and to the chief executive to sign the S1118 certificate. It's got a word for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so is the document too. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll have a mover for those, please. Uh, Rob, and a seconder. Um, Stefan, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried, thank you. So, thank you, Ruby. So now we move on to the Chief Executive Report number number 10 on the agenda, page 267. Oh, sorry, Lagorna, I jumped, yep, 261. So it's a Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act update. Can um, you talk to us, please, Jane? Yeah, that's um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have one request that we reached the today's one, um, as you'll see in there, um, and that's because of the lockdown and we needed access to the office to get hold of that information. Um, so it was um, that one, but all the rest we managed to get within the three different days. So any questions for Joan? Rob, just one on it's the second page of the table, um, second April 20, there's one there from MPI. Um, that doesn't sound like something MPI would ask about. I'm just curious if there's any other background to that request. No. No. Not that I know of. Mm. It may have been a private individual using the working out. Ah, I see. I'd just like to call the staff and getting the turnaround within the time. <laughs> yeah. um, bearing in mind we had that lockdown and our sort of very difficult working situation. So well done for only having one that extended the days. Even though there's a few, it doesn't seem to be as many as in one. No, it's been yeah, it definitely quietened down during the COVID period. Mm. Any other questions? Any discussion? Right. So we'll go straight to the um, recommendations in, please. And there's one, and that's that we should receive the report. Mover. Um, Rebecca and a seconder. Jill. 
Any those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried, thank you. So now we move on to the Chief Executive's report. Item number 10 and on page 267. Yeah. Yeah. So again, um, I'll take it as read, just, uh, just a general um, comment though, it was um, preparing for having the report put together, it sort of reinforced that there was still a lot of activity mm -hmm. happening um, for council officers during the lockdown period. Um, obviously some of the consent um, started to go a little bit quiet, but um, we definitely kept as many um, services going as we could during the period and um, that's still sort of highlighted in the report. So questions and I've got managers here to ask after um, specific questions to their areas. Okay, so questions? Rob? Only one. Um, the tables regarding consents for April and March, how do they relate to the graphs that follow? I couldn't find a graph that had the same numbers in it. I don't know if I'm interpreting the numbers correctly. Sorry. Um, Councillor, so you're talking about the, the graphs, uh, the tables that have the monthly year comparison, the 2019-2020 comparison, yep. and we're doing the graphs are separate, they are, they're not related to those tables in that there's consent applications, there's no dollar figures um, in, in those graphs. So it's, it's, it's the consent applications that have come in, um, the consents issued at that time, so this is Real time plus um, comparison to those years previous and um, consents issued and inspections. So they're, they're not related. I mean, they're related in that they're all building uh, consent related, but they're not a, a graphical depiction of the table. So the total consents for those two months is not graphed. No. Okay, thank you. That's why they don't match. This yes, I don't think any of the ordinate axes have uh, dollar values on them. No, it was the number of consents. I was looking at oh, okay. No other questions? I just have one question around um, the decision to postpone the Charles Rick and Carter Awards and the Heart of Winter Festival. Um, I'm just wondering, has it been publicised at all? Because I know a lot of our businesses in town are counting, what well, we're counting on that activity happening during the winter months, and I feel like it's going to it's going to leave quite a big gap. So, um, if yeah, because it has been postponed, it'd be good to let the community know so they can plan something else or something to fill that gap for this year. Yeah. So we did advertise the Charles Rock and Carter Award. Um, delay or postponement, um, and I can't now remember off the top of my head whether we, what we've done with communicating the winter festival decision that was sort of taken during the lockdown period. So I'll follow that up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just think people probably don't realise that it's been postponed a whole year, not just the late in the year. With yeah. the winter festival, we haven't really started advertising it anyway, have we? <coughs> um, so there was no there were no communications out. Some of, some of the businesses may have, yeah, would have been in contact with like the possibly public. No. no, I'm making more from the business here. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sure. Five wastewater treatment upgrade, wetland alteration. Um, looking good. Yes. When do you think the market will be able to survive in that environment? Uh, uh, so there's still the sweet grass planting to be done and until that is growing, so it'll be a couple of seasons of growth, so it'll be, we're talking probably in the years, not in the months. But that could be a great one. There's still be a great one, I can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, other questions? Um, discuss, discussion? Great photos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, personal perspective, if the graphs didn't match the numbers or if there was a note to say that they didn't, I yeah. might not get confused. <laughs> just one, one thing, um, just the, the daffodil um, festival. Um, it's usually held in September. Um, a decision has to be made, obviously, 
Um, is that a D Day for that? Um, yeah, so we will need to make we will need to make a decision probably within the next week, I would imagine, because that there will be a bit of a lead up. Um, probably, probably no more. Yes, the Daffodil Festival normally um, Heather and Grant Smith normally start actually going out to all the stallholders um, March, April, and, and getting um, all of that done. The other <coughs> big issue is more road closures and um, traffic management. Etc., and there's a lead time of 90 days on that. So, um, it, I, I guess from that point of view, the decision obviously has to be made, but also um, from that logistics point, that it's the, the volume of people coming to town, which will be very difficult to trace. I think um, it depends on what the government's going to come up with, it really? So, yeah. it's, it's a tough, tough call. Yeah, I mean, I think the country will would need to be back to level one. Put right here because of the numbers. Um, there's, there's, there's still absolutely no certainty about whether we'll be a level one in September, although indications are we, like, we are likely to be a level one, but we don't know. So we'll be in judgment call. Um, so we'll, um, we'll do just a little bit of thinking around that and then um, have a discussion with you next week. Thank you. Yeah, just on that as well, I'd really like to encourage the um, events team to think a bit outside the box of this as well and not just. Um, cancel out because I'm just thinking like you could do just the daffodil picking, the daffodils are still going to be there and you could you know, sell ticketed slots and even just do it over the whole weekend, not just the Sunday. So there are different avenues that we could go down um, that will still benefit the businesses in town from having those extra people in town. And the big way our sale is still scheduled to go ahead and so that will open on Thursday yep. the 10th. Normally with the gala opening of the evening that will need to be recalled a little bit, but that will that three and a half days. Um, the, the plans are, unless anything changes dramatically, that that will be going ahead. So um, the business has worked in somehow with the event centre stuff too, that'd be great. It's very hard, isn't it? I mean, you've got to decide, are, are we ready to have 10,000 plus people in one space? And that's the question we've got to ask ourselves. And there's a lot of money to be spent by not necessarily council, but other groups and organisations too. So. And it's when the people have the confidence that they actually want to go to a, a, a gathering of several thousand people because there's a the, the actual public, people are still very, very nervous. It's still that unknown. Um, so whilst the decision may be made to go ahead, people might not turn up for it, which would then be, as you say, with all the logistics and everything else that go in place, it's, you just don't know it's heads or tails really. Well, it's possible we might be on level one. It's equally possible we could have gone back up the levels if we've had important COVID from overseas and stuff. That's things that have freed up. So, yeah, caution is the word. Um, Any other discussions on the chief executive's report? Just um, again, well done to the team. Yeah. Keeping the world's turning so, so well oiled. Yeah, no, I want to acknowledge that. I mean, our last ordinary meeting was on March the 18th. Angie, a lot's happened since March the 18th. But, um, yeah, I really want to acknowledge you know, publicly in this environment to you know, the work of, of the chief executive and the management team and the staff, especially who are out there on the, on the front face and the work that they've done. And it certainly made our role as governance easier. Um, you know, um, knowing that that pandemic plan was, was in action and it was, was happening. So, um, Thank you. That's quite. Also, um, sorry. Um, congratulations, Jerry, too, for yeah. your new position of, of people and wellbeing manager. Sorry, Greg, my, my one further comment. Um, also, in the report was the um, the climate change um, sort of uh, taking stock of where we're at. Uh, so it's, like it's worth mentioning that we now have those numbers. We sort of we now have a measure of where we're at, so we can now work on heading to somewhere else and we've got something that we can measure it against. So that's a, that's a very positive thing. And I, I'm pleased that Melanie will be incorporating that into the room and the strategy. So you know, it's, it's all good news. Isn't it? The more information, the better we're going to be at make decisions. Okay, so no further discussion, we'll go to the, um, the recommendations. Um, there's one recommendation and that's receives the report. 
Uh, moved, um, moved by Robin and seconded by Rob. All those in favour? Aye. So that's carried, thank you. So now we move to item number 11, which is exclusion of the public. And the reason for this is confirmation of the public excluded minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 18th of March. So is there any discussion on that before we move into public exclude? Just to confirm the um, minutes. So can someone move us into public exclusion, please? 